When it comes to the ocean, orca are pretty much the top dog. There's been a lot of hype in the last few years about orca attacking great white sharks, the largest predatory shark. It is something that has been known for decades, but now we have HD drone footage of groups of orca, and recently even a single orca taking out great whites. Not every orca hunts great whites, but for the ones that do, they seem pretty good at it. Of course, you can check out another video I made about how some great whites seemingly survived attacks, but orca seem to be the favorite when it comes to conflict with white sharks. There really isn't much competition. They also hunt much bigger prey, like mink whales, gray whales, humpback whales, and yes, even blue whales. In 2019, a team of researchers observed a pod of orca attacking and killing an adult pygmy blue whale off the coast of Western Australia. Even though the pygmy blue whale is the smallest subspecies, as stated in my last video, they still get pretty big, and the team estimated this adult was somewhere between 18 to 22 meters, so somewhere between 60 to a little over 70 feet. It's almost like orcas can attack any other ocean creature and no ocean animal will mess with them. They are apex predators on top of the food chain after all. While some orca hunt whales much bigger than them, most of the time they are filter feeding baleen whales. They try to defend themselves of course, but they aren't predators in the same way orca are. Orca are some of the largest predators on the planet right now, but they're not the biggest. That title goes to the sperm whale. Sperm whales are currently the largest predators on the planet. They can get rather large. Males or bulls get larger than the females. According to the American Cetacean Society, adult males reach lengths of 49 to 59 feet, 15 to 18 meters, and weigh up to 35 to 45 tons. Of course, there are bigger claims, but this isn't a how big video, or a cryptid video. Truth is scarier than fiction has posted some interesting things on Twitter that may require a cryptid sightings video, but that's something else. Unlike baleen whales that have baleen in their mouth to filter feed, Sperm whales have teeth, proper teeth, 18 to 26 on each side of their lower jaw. The teeth can grow from 3 to 8 inches and weigh close to a kilo or 2.2 pounds. In fact, an alternate name for these whales is cachalot, which may have come from the old French for tooth or big tooth. They can dive to depths over 2,000 meters. In fact, some sources like NOAA claim they can dive close to 3,000 meters, so somewhere between 6,500 to 10,000 feet, diving deep to catch their prey, including giant squid. They have the largest brain of any known animal, weighing on average around 7 kilos, a little over 15 pounds. Size isn't the only metric we use to determine intelligence, but it is significant. Big brains and big teeth on a very large, powerful body. And guess what? They don't like orca. So what happens when they clash? And why would they clash? The ocean is pretty big. Why do they need to meet at all? Well, sperm whales don't like orca, but orca like them. Well, like they eat them. <laughs> or at least some populations of orca do on some occasions. But hold on, how could they eat these big whales, these big predatory whales? Well, you might have already heard this by now, but orca, sometimes called sea wolves, are pretty smart and they usually go for the smaller females and calves. They usually don't go for the bulls. According to ocean-wide expeditions, the male sperm whales are generally too big and aggressive to be hunted. Although the sperm whale or cachalot pods can average between 12 to 15, according to some sources, they sometimes go up to 50, and sometimes even higher, though the large masses may be more of a temporary arrangement. They are also mostly females, calves, and juvenile males. Bulls are mostly solitary, though sometimes they form small bachelor groups. 
Now we can try to look at size and a hypothetical scenario, but we could also look at some case studies as these animals have clashed in the wild. There was an article published in the University of Nebraska titled Killer Whale Predation on Sperm Whales, Observations and Implications. It covers three different instances of predation, one of these taking place in October of 97, the same year and month we had the first recorded case of orca attacking a great white. The event took place off the coast of California. Now, right off the bat, the orca had an advantage. There were approximately 35 orca and 9 sperm whales. The attack lasted about 4 hours, though there was already blood in the water, and the sperm whales were also already in a rosette formation, so the attack had probably started even earlier. The rosette formation is a defensive tactic used by the whales, where they form a circle with their heads pointing inwards. It seems that this can be an effective tactic up to a point. The orca attacked in waves, trying to disrupt the formation, attacking seemingly randomly until they could get one of the whales to break formation, and then they would swarm the individual. The cachalot have thick skin, requiring the orca to bite multiple times, sometimes biting like a shark, shaking their heads, sometimes biting and rotating, and sometimes biting and then trying to swim away. It seemed to the observers that individuals would be rotated to the center of the rosette, possibly randomly, just due to the chaos of the situation. Though it's conceivable they may have been moving individuals with the worst injuries into the center. Though there were at least three male orca present, they hung back until the end, with the females and their calves conducting the majority of the attack and then the males coming in at the end. And how does it end? Well, they eventually did manage to kill a female sperm whale, possibly the biggest in the group. They then dragged her away and feasted on her. The whales didn't really stand a chance. As stated in the article, one of the most striking features of the attack was the apparent helplessness of the sperm whales. We never saw them deliberately strike at the killer whales, nor did we see any attempt to escape by diving, even during the many times when the killer whales withdrew from the attack. A potential defense behavior by the sperm whales was tail slapping, but even the tail slapping didn't seem to do much. Again, quoting the article, most of the tail slaps had no real force behind them. The few strong tail slaps we did see seemed to be merely reflexive. They did not appear to target individual attackers, and they did not appear to deter them. It seemed all of the sperm whales were injured by the end, some very severely. This was October 21st, 1997. There was also another predation event on the 26th. This time, the group found five sperm whales in one location, and then they found another group of about five again, about a kilometer away. The second group seemed to be being pursued by a group of five killer whales, including an adult female and male. The groups were a bit more matched now, at least in terms of numbers, but it seems the sperm whales put out some kind of warning call as the first group rapidly changed direction and started to head towards the second group, the ones that were being pursued. But when the sperm whales got to the second group, others must have heard the call, as now there were about 15 cachalot in total. Around this time, the orcas caught up and a lone adult female orca approached the sperm whales, but their numbers kept increasing as more and more sperm whales approached and their numbers grew to 20 and still more were coming. To quote the article, at least four other groups of sperm whales in the distance were charging towards the core group at full speed, pushing waves with their heads as they plowed through the water. The converging animals initially included separate groups of eight, five, and two animals, and a large, lone individual that appeared to be an adult male. A big bull was coming. They formed a massive rosette, occasionally diving and then coming up with even more whales until the group was approximately 50 in number. At this point, the female orca decided to leave and return to her pod that was also leaving the area. After this, the sperm whales also dispersed into smaller groups. It's pretty fascinating how different the two sightings are. I mean, they're only a few days apart, really, but the response was very different. I'm sure that the sperm whales on the 21st could have used all the reinforcements, but for whatever reason, that didn't happen. 
The article also details an earlier attack from 1989 in which dolphins and pilot whales also seem to be trying to escape from orca at the same time sperm whales are trying to escape. But the conclusion was similar to the predation event on October 21st, 97. A whale was killed and eaten by the orca. But I want to fast forward to a more recent observation and talk about a secret weapon the sperm whales use to defend themselves in an attack. A few articles came out in March of 2024 about an incident off the southern coast of Western Australia. This time, there were 30 orca involved, but unfortunately the reports don't seem to have the number of sperm whales. There is a video on YouTube, and while I can't say for certain how many whales are in it, it looks like a few, maybe four or five. But again, I'm not entirely sure. But the way this group defended themselves from the orca was something the marine biologist Jenna Tucker called defensive defecation. One of the orca, who is apparently called Cookie, charged at them and they released a large amount of excrement, apparently a dark reddish color due to their squid diet. And Cookie didn't seem to like this very much and left them alone. So I guess an effective tactic. I should also mention they were already in a rosette formation when they did this. I think it's interesting that we don't have too many other documented cases of the whales doing this. And I wonder if it's unique to populations in different regions. The other thing is, though, that a lot of these events seem to mostly involve a group of females, calves, and juvenile males that are fending off the orca. Occasionally, a bull will seem to come to join the group, but a lot of the time... When you hear about sperm whales being the killer of killer whales, people are referring to the bulls, who are mostly solitary. I've read and heard about an incident where a lone bull scared off multiple orca while they were following a fishing trawler. The odd thing is that videos and forum posts use the exact same wording when retelling this account, which goes like this. A killer whale pod was systematically taking fish caught on the trawler's long lines as the lines were being pulled into the ship when a male sperm whale appeared to repeatedly charge the killer whale pod in an attempt to drive them away. It was speculated by the film crew that the sperm whale was attempting to access the same fish. The killer whales employed a tail outward and tail slapping defensive position against the bull sperm whale, similar to that used by female sperm whales against attacking killer whales. But it seems like this is a direct quote from the Wikipedia page on sperm whales. There is a citation, but if we follow it, it takes us to a Nat Geo page on the Wayback Machine. But the page talks about an orca attack on a family of sperm whales. There is no mention of a trawler. The term male sperm whale or bull doesn't even come up. Well, actually it does, in a comment at the bottom of the page where someone asks, I've heard orcas avoid bull sperm whales. I have even read some male sperm whales harass orcas. Has anybody witnessed this? There is a link to a paper, but it brings us to an abstract from the 97 attack on the sperm whales. Now I'm not saying this event didn't happen, I mean, maybe it did. I just wish there was a better source so we could know more of the details rather than just a direct quote from Wikipedia. Speaking of claims that are difficult to verify, I've also heard on some of the killer of killer whales or animals orca are afraid of that sperm whales have killed orca off the coast of New Zealand. Maybe, but what's the source? It's kind of hard to find that. There's an account from 2017 off the coast of Sri Lanka where 100 sperm whales had to fend off a group of eight orca who, according to one witness, had no fear of the 100 strong sperm whale pod. There is an account from the Guardian newspaper with many photos documenting what happened. At one point, there were 10 bulls that lined up to face the orca, possibly as a distraction for the others to escape. They also did the defecation defense. The thing is, the scene was getting so hectic that the fishing boat, where the observers were, decided to get out of there before their boat got overturned. Now, there have been specific studies done on how the bulls react to the presence of orca. There's a fascinating paper on nature where they did experiments where they played sounds of killer whales and observed how the bulls responded. There were five different bulls in this study, and when the researchers played the sounds of killer whales, four out of the five bulls turned around and swam away from the sound. They also seem to do shorter and shallower dives. Perhaps it would be easier to see the orca approach if they were closer to the surface, and also perhaps so they could easily get access to air before a possible deep 
evasive dive, but that's kind of more speculation. There are a lot of claims online that sperm whales use loud noises to blast their enemies, and perhaps in some cases this is true, but according to the paper, after the bulls were subjected to the killer whale recordings, they went quiet, or at least, quote, clicking activity was significantly lower. Also, they were initially solitary, but some attempted to group up after the sounds were played. It would seem that bulls don't really attempt to face off against orca unless they are defending a larger family group. The thing is, there aren't that many recorded accounts of orca attacking sperm whales. There is some speculation that it may happen more often than we realize, but of course it is important to note not all orca hunt sperm whales. But looking at the accounts we do have, I don't really see sperm whales or cachalots as the killer of killer whales or as something that orca are afraid of. It seems that in reality, some orca groups want to eat sperm whales and the whales have to play defense. If they mass in large numbers and use defensive tactics, they can sometimes avoid being eaten, but not always. Certainly, on paper, a bull seems like a formidable opponent, but it's kind of all theoretical. It seems from the evidence we have, they just want to get out of the way. Again, unless they are joining a big group to defend others. As time goes on, I'm sure we will gather more evidence and witness more events, and more studies will come out. Now, I'm not a marine biologist, but just from my perspective, as far as I can tell, orca really are the top dog in the oceans right now. And if they find something that they want to eat, they'll eat it. Thank you to my members and patrons, and thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.